Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today's topic is a good one. It's on choosing the correct trailer for your chatterbait, swim jigs, whatever bait it is that you want to put a trailer on. I think it's important to recognize that the trailer you choose and the way you put it on will have a direct impact on your bait's performance. It doesn't mean there's a right way or a wrong way. It means you need to put it on correctly to match the conditions that you're fishing. So what I mean by that is an example. We'll, we'll talk about just the swim jig, okay? The first bait here is a swim jig. I've got a Berkley chunk on the back. You know, in this case, this is a bait that I would absolutely throw if I'm around the shad spawn. And you might go, well, it's a white swim jig, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the trailer and how I have it on in this case. So if I take this trailer and by threading it up, and having it so that it's horizontal to the, the surface of the water, right? So the, the, it's flat in the water. The, the width of the body is causing a flat plane. What that's going to do when I go to shake this bait and try to keep it up to the surface is it's going to grab water and keep the bait rising higher. That, for me, is how I want to fish a shad spawn. If I'm popping this bait, doing the Alabama shake through some shallow grass and just trying to keep it right on the surface so it's like dimpling the surface, I need to have a trailer that's gonna help me keep my bait up. Yes, you can choose a light swim jig, but if you have the correct trailer and a trailer that's positioned properly, it's gonna help keep that bait up in the water. Really important to understand that. So as another example, if I took, you know, let's say I take a, a chatter bait. So on this chatterbait, I've got one of the best chatterbait trailers that you can use, in my opinion. This is a Zayco on it. Well, if you're dealing with a chatterbait, most of your action from the chatterbait is coming from the blade. For me, I like to have a bait that's going, going to allow this bait to hunt, because if, if I want to create erratic, erratic action to create those reaction strikes, I want my bait to pop real far to the side. A trailer like this Zayco, is a really good choice for that because it doesn't grab the water. It's a straight tail. It doesn't create any sort of extra water disturbance. It allows the blade to do the motion. And because the, the trailer is not grabbing water, it's allowing that bait to dart further to the side, creating more of an er erratic motion. If I were to replace this with, say, a skinny dipper, What's going to happen is this boot tail is going to catch a lot of water, create a lot of water displacement, and it's going to create drag. So when this bait wants to hunt, the boot tail is going to prevent it from hunting far from side to side. That may be what you want. For me, normally I like to have a lot of erratic motion in my chatterbaits. But if I'm fishing extremely muddy water with the chatterbait, I may not want as much hunting action, I may actually rather to put the boot tail on to create more water displacement so that the bait as a whole creates even more noise and more vibration in the water because I got the boot tail kicking and I got the blade kicking. So if I'm fishing super muddy water, I may want that. But if I'm fishing clear water, I probably don't want the boot tail. I want my bait to be moving as much as possible to create those erratic uh, motions that are going to generate those reaction strikes. You know, if I were to put, let's say I go back to the swim jig. If I were to take the swim jig and put the Zayco on the trailer, well, now I've got a swim jig that's not going to have any motion at all to it. If I'm just reeling it straight or popping it, I'm imparting all of the action into the bait. Maybe that's what you want. If I were to take the boot tail, put it on a swim jig, and retrieve it straight to the boat, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a rolling motion in the swim jig as it's coming back to the boat, which to me is a very good action to have on your swim jigs. So a boot tail is a good choice for a swim jig in a lot of circumstances. But you just need to recognize that the differences in trailers will have a different impact on the bait. As another example, what a lot of people don't realize is when you take other trailers and rig them up in a certain manner, you're going to get different performance out of the bait. So if I were to take some of my favorite trailers for both chatterbaits and swim jigs are big wide body 
are wide body baits, the beaver style baits. This is a creature hog, a max scent creature hog. We got a uh, pit boss here, two phenomenal baits in my opinion. Here's, a, here's the catch with them though. If I were to take, let's see, where's my swim jig? If I were to take the creature hog and put it on a chatter bait, which I really, really like, if I put it on so that the bait is vertical, meaning the wide part of the bait is up and down. So I'll put it on so that it's, it's I guess you'd say parallel with the hook shank, right? So it's up and down. The wide part of the body is from top to bottom. I like to do that because for me, this creates a lot more hunting. Uh, it creates a lot more displacement from the tail standpoint and looks more natural. But more than anything, the reason I'm doing it is because a chatterbait has a natural rise to it when you retrieve it. It wants to rise to the surface. If I have a, a bait that's on that is vertical in the water column, it's got um, more keel action and less of that planer board action, it'll allow me to keep the bait down easier. If I wanted to keep this bait up higher, I can take this bait off and rig it so that it's rig it so that it's flat and I get a different motion and the bait will ride at different depths. So if I put it on so that it's it's uh I guess perpendicular to hook blade so that it's flat in the water, that's going to allow the bait to hunt more because now there's less resistance from a flat standpoint that's up and down so it can go side to side more so it will hunt more but the bait's going to rise more because now I've got more body that's going to grab water as it's coming pushing the bait higher you may want that you may not want that if you're fishing you know a super thick weed flat in really shallow water I may want my bait to rise higher so if that's the case I'll put my trailer on so that's flat if I'm trying to fish deeper weeds and I want my bait to stay down more, then I'll turn it over and have it so that I have uh, less resistance when the bait's being pulled forward. It'll allow the bait to fall better. It's just different things like that that you need to recognize depending on what bait you're throwing and what trailer you want to utilize and what the conditions are that you're fishing around. You know, the same thing can go for the new Berkeley Boss Grub. This is, you know, a great trailer. It's a just a little twin tail kicker. You know, if you rig it so that the tails are vertical, you get a more natural presentation, but the bait's got more keel now. So it's going to ride straighter. If you turn it so that it's on its side, the bait will move more to the side because now there's less resistance in the water, but it's not gonna wanna dive as deep. So there's just various little things that you want to recognize when you're picking out a trailer and how you're rigging the trailer. Little things like that can make a definite difference uh, because your bait is either getting more into the strike zone or getting less hung up, which makes you more efficient on the water. So guys, these are little tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years. Go out and play with it. You'll see that there definitely is a difference. Uh, and I think you'll find that it can make a pretty big effect on your fishing too and your productivity. So if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for tomorrow's video.